right, welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. My name is Tyler Kuzgi. I'm going to be your host tonight. Today on the show, we have Jake Russell, a uh, Libertarian activist out of L.A. County. And we also have Joshua Smith, who sits on the LNC and is currently running for the Libertarian Party of California's state chair. And uh, speaking of uh, running for offices, um, let, let's talk about, you know, the LP and, and, and some of the past disappointments we've had, you know, with the uh, Gary Johnson Senate run, with, with, um, with your favorite hero, uh, Larry Sharp's uh, unfortunate, Love me some Larry Sharp, un- unfortunate New York uh, disaster, which I, I'm a huge Larry Sharp fan, but I, I, I yeah, will it was, say well, it wasn't as, as wasn't too pleased with the results and stuff. What we got all these issues, and what are some more pragmatic approaches that maybe we could take for victory? And, and what are your thoughts on some some of these uh, these past disappointments? Well, yeah, absolutely. Look, I currently I'm running for chair of, of the California State Libertarian Party, and I work with the National Party, obviously on the board uh, uh, committee there. Um, I, I think something that we have kind of lacked in, at least with my tenure with the party, is that we're never legislatively focused. We're just not. You know, we. Yes, we want to run candidates at every single level of, of, of government possible, you know, the county. Well, I mean, should city. we? I mean, is that a good approach? I yeah, sure. I Why not? Look, the more we can get people talking about libertarian philosophy or principles or policies or whatever it is that can enrich the well, constituency's life, let's, it's I mean, important. Let's talk about that for a second. Uh, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, I mean. Well, you did, though. Well, I am. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, if you're going to run candidates on, on, on every level, um, doesn't that in, in a way kind of dilute the, the brand, do you think? No, I, look, I, I think that, you know, we're not going to be currently in the state that we're in. We are not going to be able to uh, give resources to all those candidates. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we combine all of our resources, we might have a better chance on, on something, maybe more pragmatic or realistic sure, races. And we should for some of the races that we pinpoint. I think it's important that we pinpoint the races that we have an opportunity to win in and we should put more resources there. But we should still have, you know, Kevin from from Pleasant Hill run for, uh, uh, you know, some kind of position there, a city council member. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good with the, the, yeah, uh, the city council, the nonpartisan offices. I, I think that's a great strategy. Run everyone for, for nonpartisan because then you're building some uh, some experience. Yeah, and you're showing that your policies can actually enrich yeah. the lives. But when you're running for, like, say, uh, state senate or, or something with the LP name, it, then when people see it, it kind of dilutes it and it almost gets a sense like, oh, well, the, whatever they have the L, they lose. I mean, you don't want to build that brand. You want to say, oh, I haven't seen an L in a while and stuff. The more candidates that we have, and this is, you can look this up in, you know, past uh, election seasons. The more candidates we, we win, the higher our, the, the more candidates we run, the higher our numbers go. And that's because we have more candidates who are talking about libertarian principles and policies to more people. Mm-hmm. And that's important. I'm not saying that we have to do this. I'm just saying that. Barring someone from from running, what unless they're actively damaging the brand or going out of their way mm-hmm. to hurt the brand? Well, I'm not necessarily so much talking about barring, uh, but there's a point where where you're gonna uh, do an endorsement. I mean, we had that issue a while back when we had the uh, governor race. We endorsed two people for the same position. Yeah, I was there. I was at the state convention. I mean, what were your thoughts on that? That was it was not a good idea. That that was ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I, it's not good. I, I was actually the one that kind of uh, you know organized the motion that. That actually, no, I was on I was on the state committee, and I actually called that motion where we ha- we could not endorse uh, two, two candidates. candidates, and then someone undid it at the state convention. I was so yeah, I think it, I think it was a bad idea, and I think you should you should pick whoever's best for that position and run them. That's how it should be. The governor position in California is one of the biggest, it, it, probably the biggest state level position you have, and and it's gonna it gives you an opportunity to make a lot of noise. You know, the mm-hmm. governor race gives you a lot of opportunity to make even with the top two primary here. But what I'm saying is. Let people run. Try to recruit candidates to run, mm-hmm. and then focus on the candidates that you know have opportunity. But that's important. But I think what's more important is we start looking into legislatively based issues and finding people that we agree with on, even if it's one issue, and building those coalitions. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we can get stuff done legislatively without ever getting somebody elected. That can happen. And the party can be behind that. And that's what I want to bring to the state of California is finding these coalitions, building these coalitions, and, and having you know people who agree with us on stuff like prison reform, criminal justice reform, uh, cannabis, whatever it is, and working with those coalitions to, to get that legislation passed. Now we're showing the people of California that libertarian policies can enrich their lives, even though we don't have anybody in office. Well, it's besides Jeff, Jeff Hewitt, who's amazing. Sorry. I love you, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, the, the highest elected libertarian official of all time in the in history of the party. But that's okay. Nope, no big deal. Uh, and that's important. But like I said, we need to start releasing these laws that have a stronghold over people in California. And we don't always have to get somebody elected to do that. We can do that through coalition building. We can do that through mm-hmm. legislation. And so, you know, I think that's, a, the, the, as far as pragmatic goes for me, because I am an, I am an un, yeah, I mean, un, un, unapologetic libertarian. There's no doubt about it. I mean, so as Paul, unapologetic, and I, mean, I like some of the thing, things you're saying, um, and, that, and I know that you're uh, seeking to be chair for California, um, if if you do manage to become chair, what what are some maybe more strategies you think you might take that? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, before you answer that question, <laughs> I would like to know how, how about you tell him where you would like to direct it before he answers your question. As far as my focus, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, and I just I just released a video. I mean, if you guys wanted to look me up, Joshua Smith, uh, you know, I I released that video. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have a heavy focus on candidate recruitment and education. I think that's really big. Affiliate growth and strengthening, which mm-hmm. is going to be really important. I have no problem traveling to anywhere in California and helping affiliates, you know, build up their repertoire and their and their arsenal. I think that's really important. Um, I will. I personally would do videos every month to let the body know what we're doing and how we're doing it. I would personally go to the capital, the state's capital, and lobby if I have to for legislative issues. I will personally build these coalitions mm-hmm. and. I will encourage the hardest working among us to do the same. And so as as a state chair, I don't believe I need to be that overbearing, uh, micromanaging presence. I think that we have a lot of really good people here in California, and encouragement is important, and leading by example is the most important thing you can do as a leader. That's amazing. Yeah. So well, what are your thoughts on it, Jake? I mean, or at least just on the issue of running more pragmatic races. I, I know that you were involved with me when I started the, uh, the Elder County Libertarian Party. What are some... I mean, I, I'm not a great practitioner at all this. You know, politics are not my main focus. Um, I am all for basically starting small county levels and making small wins. Um, I know tried to run for governor, certain people here and there as libertarians, and uh, many other different states in the body... But, I mean, really, at the county level, we really need a win at this point in time. Just just a solid, like, this is what we're trying to do. We all support each other, both the southern and northern libertarians of California. And I really think that bringing all of us together and showing that all of us can, you know, really support and uh, be, be happy with, you know, e- even our smaller steps. Yeah. Well, I think that's important. You know, they, I'm sure you know the saying, all politics is local. You know, you feel your local politics more than any other politics in the country. You don't really feel the, the, you know, the, the presidential politics, you feel the, the county commissioner who's going to come and tell you that your grass is too long and we're going to fine you for not mowing it. Well, I mean, you you feel, you feel the presidential if, you know, you're the winning side kind of thing. Sure, right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It's great. Triggering the libs is great. Right. The thing thing about it is, is, is that, you know, you feel politics in your pocket and in your life, everyday life locally more than any other politics. So getting those local politic, po- political wins are important. And also what I, what I like to say is the non-election wins. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you've ever dieted or, or tried to lose weight, you know, you have those, non, those non-scale victories, right? Your pants are, <laughs> pants are smaller. You haven't lost any weight, but your, your pants are a little bigger, right? <laughs> That, I like to, I call that the non-election victories or, or no election victories, you know, and that's the legislatively based stuff where we build these coalitions and we start to improve yeah. people's lives. We can do that without winning elections. And exactly, that's, right. and, and that's one thing. And, and if you ever uh, work with the uh, uh, leadership institute over in DC, oh yeah, they they teach you a lot about that type of philosophy. Is you don't necessarily have to win a race. Uh, sometimes it's just as simple as putting fire under somebody who's already in office. Yep. Uh, make, make them boil and feel the heat a little bit and, and get them to change their views, which has been done before. We and, have... well, and make no mistake, there are people in office in California right now that agree with us on single issues. There are, absolutely. They may be as far away from our platform as possible on everything else, but they do agree with us on one issue. And we need to find a way to drive that issue home and make sure that that issue gets done because then we're winning, even if we're not elected. Exactly. And that's one thing I think that people underestimate about the Libertarian Party. Uh, is that it's, it's not like, oh, yeah, we don't have a lot of uh, partisan elected officials, right. uh, but we still have a lot of victories. I mean, we essentially started the LGBT movement. Right. I mean, we're the first political party in the United States to ever advocate 
that a man should be allowed to be for another man if he wants to. Yeah. Uh, there's, the Democrats didn't do it until 30, 40 years later when after they, they tested it out, the kind of pilot program watched us kind of do it for a while and realized, oh, maybe it is safe to, to, to be okay with that stuff. So, I mean, I mean that, it, that is something that, you know, we have to deal with. Um, well, I mean, speaking of, of uh, you know, candidates and races, uh, what, what are some, maybe some good or bad presidential candidates you think that the LP can run for the presidential election? Patrick Byrne, Larry Sharp, man, that's my ticket. I'm with you 100%. That's the ticket that I want. That's the ticket that I've been pushing for. Uh, that's the ticket that my entire caucus is pushing for. We would love to see Patrick Byrne, who is the owner and CEO of Overstock.com, uh, big time crypto guy, unapologetically libertarian, great speaker, has gone all over the country doing uh, you know speeches, and and he's pretty well known. And then you got Larry Sharp, who is coming off of a, a terrible uh, election results. Mm -hmm. Still one of the best libertarian presenters. Yeah, still, there is. despite not, not having that great of an election result, uh, I still feel. A closer connection with him, uh, and I feel that he can appropriately re represent the Libertarian Party, and doesn't really embarrass us. Right. I, I don't see much embarrassment from him. I, I, I've seen very little. I have met some people who were very uh, against Larry Sharp. I, I, I mean, he doesn't seem to. Uh, I mean, as much I, I, I like Gary Johnson, but I feel that he. I mean, there were a lot of things, quirky things about him that kind of. Yeah. It's a little embarrassing. I, I don't want to say I was completely embarrassed by him. I still like the guy. Uh, but but Larry Sharp, I mean, it's kind of hard to feel embarrassed when you're on him. Look, the, the thing with Larry Sharp is he ran he ran a unapologetically libertarian campaign, and quite possibly and pretty pragmatic. I mean, the first or second most left state in the country. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he got beat by the Green candidate. You know, and, but not by much. <laughs> no, not by much. But the problem was is that you know it's hard to do that kind of work there. But he did move people more towards us. And that's important. That's an important part of our campaigns that we, you know, he probably never expected to actually win. It almost felt like he, he got more supporters <coughs> outside of his own state. Than yeah, <laughs> well, and he did. But he moved a large, yeah, and he, he moved people all over the country closer to us. But um, as, as, as a vice presidential nominee, he could travel the country. And he could he could tell people and he, he'd ideas. be a great fundraiser. Oh, he'd, the, he'd be great. One of the for, best. He's one of the best. Fundraisers. Yeah, you need you need a good fundraiser, and you need somebody who can represent us. Um, and he could be a good backbone uh, for whoever. Yeah, we and speak. then he's got he's got the big money uh, presidential nominee Patrick Byrne. Mm -hmm. You know who's who's got the name recognition, who's got the business aspect, who knows the libertarian philosophy and principles, can speak, and has the funding already. He's yeah, a billionaire. he's already got the money in his pocket. I mean, yes, yeah. So, so just just kind of throwing it out there, you know, talking about this. Really think another businessman is really the way you want to go. I mean, I'm, I'm very open, kind of on both sides. A libertarian businessman. Yeah, I, I, it's, I see your point there. I mean, I mean, because we have uh, a very successful billionaire already in office, and maybe it might right. go stale. I, I I feel like, but it, I mean, it, would it, be stale, it you know. I think at this point, I I, I mean, we got to stick with what we see works. Uh, before before we we can really try experiment. I, I, I get what you're saying there, though. I mean, I mean that is a good, good point to be concerned about. We don't want to turn people off by another businessman that everyone's like, oh, another, you know, somebody who's got the money who's going to buy their levy in the election. But, I mean, he is running as a libertarian. I mean, he, he's, you've got to spend a lot of money. Maybe. Maybe. He's not He's well, not an announced... Uh, True. That, yeah, that is... That yeah, is. he's not an announced presidential... It's more of a dream nominee. candidate. Yeah, he's point. a dream candidate, but... He's talked about it. He's been asked about it. He even spoke to Reason Magazine about it and said, the chances are slim, but he didn't close the door. And and I think I think that what that's going to take is Larry Sharp going to him and saying, I would love to be your vice presidential nominee, and we should run together. And I think Pat shows up in Austin in 2020, and we have a real opportunity to make a dent in the in the current system. So. Yeah, I mean that would be a pretty exciting campaign to work on. What are some maybe other? What are some, what are some, what's, what's a, what would be a bad candidate that we can candidate we should run? You know my feelings. I'm sure you know my feelings already. I don't. I don't need to talk about it. But I'm not. A, I'm not a big Weld fan. I'm not a big Weld fan. I'm just not. He doesn't inspire me, and I don't think he inspires a lot of libertarians. You yeah, know he I mean? doesn't really. He kind of is off-putting. I mean, I, I see why you might think he's a pragmatic choice, but definitely does not resonate with libertarians very well. And he's made some, uh, I don't want to some faux pas. I don't want to scare him away from the party, but yeah. But and maybe we should keep him for like like a local race or something. Yeah, he's just I'm not a big I'm not a big Weld fan, and people know that about me. And I haven't I haven't been quiet about it. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do anything to influence the 
the POTUS campaign. I sit on the Libertarian <laughs> National Committee. Uh, it would be it would be out of line for me to try and influence that. But I'm not a big Bill Weld supporter. Personally, I'm not a big Bill Weld supporter. I think there's much better people that we can run that are more inspiring and have more money and have more connections and more visibility. He, you know, he, he did some good things in Massachusetts, but he, you know, he's also, you know, he sat on the board of a, a think tank that um, has gotten us into war several times. He, mm -hmm. you know, he advocated for some type of gun control. You know, he, he did at the end of his election say, you know, Hillary Clinton was a good friend and probably would make you know, a good president or whatever. You know, it's so there's this faux pause and, and maybe he's learning. Maybe he's coming around. Maybe he's becoming more libertarian. Yeah, and I, mean, I definitely want to give him the benefit of the yeah. doubt, but we still need to like say, hey, man, I mean, and I know he has made some addressments. I, I, I have seen some of the uh, lesser shared videos of him saying he actually is more pro gun and, and maybe at a time he was out of line and stuff when he fat. I get it, uh, but you definitely need to. Uh, it's probably a good idea to let him cool off for this a while. Is our, this is someone running for the biggest office in the country with a libertarian name next to their to, to their name, and that person needs to be a libertarian. And I don't I don't mean they need to go out and be an Arvin Vora. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I personally like personally I like Arvin Vora, but I've I've hung out with the guy. He's a nice guy. I do not want him running around doing his. His men's rights activist stuff. Uh, that's, and, that, that would be, you know, it would be horrible. It's talking about shooting school boards, and it'd be horrible. It'd be terrible, you know. Uh, a nice guy in, in real life. I don't want to be our presidential nominee. I think he's going to be, he's definitely on the bad side. <laughs> <laughs> we get Arvin Mora and we get Weld. They'll count on Oh, my goodness. Them, right? Could you imagine? <laughs> Weld, oh, oh, my God. A Weld for a ticket. <laughs> oh, this might be this might be our chance. That actually, actually might that actually might work. Actually work. <laughs> I, I, now I have to go back and rethink this. No, I just, you know, I, I, and, and then Kim Ruff. I don't know if you know Kim Ruff. She's announced that she's running for president uh, with uh, John Phillips, mm -hmm. who's a regional uh, LNC member as well. She's great. She's she's unapologetically. I've heard I've heard of her, but I don't really know too much about yeah, her. I wouldn't be mad. I mean, if she got the not look, she doesn't have she doesn't have the funding and she doesn't have the visibility. Those are two things that we really we we need. Yeah. But as far as principles, her speaking ability, she does she does wonderful. So you know, if she was to, to able to fund a nationwide media tour, I wouldn't be opposed to that. At the end of the day, we want somebody who's going to pass libertarian principles to, to the general public around the country. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely need, because I don't, I and mean, we're definitely not going to win the 2020 campaign, but we want somebody who represents us well. We don't want to lose support Absolutely. in 2020. I mean, that, I think that should be the, the key focus, is keeping the support we gained from the 2016 election and maintaining and keeping that, that support and that momentum going uh, while still being pragmatic and understanding the, the uh, realistic uh, chances of us winning. Um, so, I mean, somebody who, at the very least, they don't have to necessarily be radical and extreme to have this, you know, this extreme movement to get it all of a sudden get everyone to join, but at least maintain. What about, uh, how do you, how, what are your feelings on Adam Kokesh? The peaceful dissolution of the federal government. I, I love the guy, but his 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 entire platform would get him impeached the first day in office. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I like Adam. It's another person I like personally. You know, I, 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 I I've talked to him before um, online and stuff. I, I I like a lot of things he says. Um, you know, I I, I, uh, I I think I have a book that he signed and stuff. Freedom, <laughs> freedom. Yeah, it's his book. That's his manifesto. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That was he great. He just went around. Actually, he's in Louisiana right now, in New Orleans, and he just went around and put a copy of that book. In every single mailbox in Louisiana, in New Orleans. Great. I mean, I I love that. I just the only thing that, that bu bugs me is when you look at his his plan of, of action, first day in office, like it, it, the peaceful and orderly dissolution of the federal government. You could say it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, it, it's going to get him impeached. Like he'll, yeah. he'll do. No, it'll be the worst. It'll be the most. He if wants we to sign win. one single executive order on his first day in office to to uh, facilitate. He wants he wants to end his own job. Become the facilitator of the peaceful and orderly dissolution of the. So what, what happened is, it, even if we won, if we somehow magically won, we, <laughs> we'd lose. We would lose because all of a sudden we're impeached. Yeah, I like Adam, I, and I just you we, know, at the end of the day, that's what we all want. We, we, we <laughs> wasted all of our money. Like we wasted all this money, and we lose. Yeah. We win if the we campaign, could, and if we could dissolve the federal government and take the government straight back. But to it, the it, state it wouldn't level. work. It wouldn't work. It'd be great. Though. Why <laughs> wouldn't it work? <laughs> it would. It's, it's actually. I think it's actually his. I, I've heard it argued that his plan is actually an unconstitutional plan, uh, and I've seen him debate it. So I, I don't know. I, you know, like I said, I, I just want somebody who's going to represent us well on the national stage, and and I and to me. The person that's best to do that would be Pat Byrne and Larry Sharp. Yeah, I, I am 100% alignment with you there. Um, well, 
What, uh, what do you think of that that one chick? What's her name? Uh, Ocasio uh, Lisa, Cortez. Alicia. Was it okay? Ocasio Cortez. The uh, the basically she's a social communist. Uh, yeah. That one uh, for uh, Congress in New York. And that's, I mean, that just goes back to talking about the Larry Sharp campaign, you know, a, an actual, like, announced socialist uh, won a, a, a Congress seat there. And and she's, you know, look, she does everything that we should be doing in the Libertarian Party. There's Absolutely. no doubt about that. She put on her running shoes, and she went and knocked every single door in her district. Every single door. By yep. herself, as a waitress, and won a congressional seat. And by the way, as much as I'm anti-socialist, I, I don't, uh, I don't hate her. I may, I may make fun of her name a little bit. And oh, I love her memes though. But <laughs> the best memes on Facebook, right? But besides the Donald Trump and McDonald memes, the the AOC memes are the, are the best. They're the best. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's great. She well, she you know she she promised all this stuff, and then when she went through her plan and and looked at the economic side of it, the budgetary side of it, <clears throat> it was going to cost some astronomical amount of money. And when asked about it. How are you going to pay for this? She said, you just pay for it. That's what you do. And you know what's funny is now um, she's being criticized by her own party. Her Even her own party, the Democrats, who are always pushing a very similar agenda. Are they, okay, that's a little too far. Yeah, she's, she, she's, what, she's what we are on the left, though. You know what I mean? That's, that's what it is. The Republicans do the same thing to us. You guys are too radical. Why? Why are we radical? Because we want to get rid of, we want to roll back taxes and have the government take their hand out of our pockets. That's not a radical idea. That's a that's a human rights idea, yeah. you know. But she's she's the other side of that. She's the uh, so the you, radical. Let's let's include government to a point where you don't have <laughs> your own life anymore. They own everything. So yeah. Yeah, while at the same time thinking that that they're uh, getting getting less government. Yeah, the majority of Democrats are just moderate centrists. You yeah, know? and that's and she's not. She's a hard left. Uh, social communist, basically. Yeah, and, and she's definitely put pushing um, that that movement a lot lot further. They're getting a lot more strength. The uh, the socialist left, um, it, it, it's really really just yeah. They call her Baby Bernie. <laughs> I think that's her nickname, Baby Bernie. Baby Bernie. So so so, why do you guys think that is? But like, why do you why do you think it's kind of snowballing and really really you know people don't want to have to be bigger. in control of their own lives they don't people don't want to take responsibility for the ills in this world they don't want to they want a government that's going to take all responsibility of them and and wipe their butt and and take their money and well, hey i kind of want someone to wipe my butt <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day that's what that's what we're looking at we're looking at a, a, a generation of people who don't want to have responsibility for their own actions i mean yeah i mean they're definitely the, these marxists uh, are, are pushing this very uh radical culture i mean uh, and I think what one of the things that she always brings up is she's being criticized for being a woman. Uh, it's not so much for being a woman. Um, it's really for the plans. And that kind of brings me to another thing. Here in California. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here in California, we, we have a law that pa that passed uh, relatively recently. It's been a while, a while now. But um, it is required that if you uh, have a board of directors, you have to have at least one woman on that board. That's requirement. Why? Yeah, what? I, anybody got to... No, 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 no get, get me wrong. No, I, tell me why, though. Yeah, well, 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 what is the don't, purpose don't, of that? Where, okay, where is the qualification that, that was made by human society that says you must have a woman? It would it be reversed if you had all women, would you require at least one man? One man? No. no, no they'll all we have, let, me, let me consult <laughs> well, no. with Gillette real quick. No, look, look here's, here's the thing. This is a ridiculous law. It's a ridiculous, unneeded law. There's lots of there's lots of board of directors that have women on. There's lots exactly. already before this law. Well, and there's a very large amount of very intelligent women. Oh God, but that does amazing. not mean. I love. The, trust me, no one loves women as much as me. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. <laughs> but that does not mean that just because you're a woman applying for a job that that basically okay we we have to find somebody right. now. So, so, okay, the first woman that walks in the door, we have to hire you so we can start a business. It doesn't give you the opportunity to hire the best person for the job. No, it and doesn't. And a lot of the times, the best person for that job is a woman. But yep. there doesn't need to be a lot of mandate. That. Right. Absolutely. I mean, look, I mean uh, at, at, uh, my, my job outside of politics, I mean, uh, we have a, a large amount of women uh, pe people involved, and they're very good at their job. Yeah. I mean, it's not an issue, um, but somehow we all address like there is an issue. I mean, when you smart solve, if, if, let's say the three of us, we want to start our own business and we decide to have a board of directors and three of us go on the board. 
all of a sudden we're illegal because we don't have a woman in this room that right. uh, come join our board. Although I know some women that would probably be good on our board of directors. Same here, and that's fine. And that's fine. And I, I have. But no what if they didn't want to be on our board? That's another issue. Yeah. What if you can't find a woman who wants to be on our board? Oh, man, now you're in trouble. Okay, my, my my issue has nothing to do with the opposite sex or women or anything. It's whatever numb nuts was like. Hey, hey, we're we're gonna make this. You know. This is going to be a law. Here, here right? you go. You know, like a I'm sorry. Law. That's a progressive law. I mean, that's what the pro- that's what the progressives are shooting for. They want to control every single aspect of everybody's life. That's what it is. And that goes back to AOC. You know, and and that's what she wants to do. And that's what that's what the progressive agenda is. Ha- have we thrown out yeah. intelligence and diligent working and things yeah. like that? So yeah, so we can all be fair and equal. Yeah. Look at look at the progress. Look, intelligence is optional. Look, the, the <laughs> intelligence here in optional. California, we've had progressive deforestation policies that have fueled forest fire after forest fire after forest fire, deadly forest fires. Right. And that's because of because people were like, oh, we have to save the forest, we have to save the trees, blah 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 blah. They they pushed for this progressive agenda so hard that they they didn't even realize what would happen if if they stopped the deforestation. And the, I mean, even uh, looking at like what Ella County, which which uh, used to be the wealthiest county, one of the wealthiest counties in the nation, uh, because of the amount of natural resources, but because of all the laws, all the mining, all the forest foresting got banned. Almost nowhere near one of the wealthiest. I mean, one fact, probably closer to one of the poorest counties and, and probably one of the most corrupt. So, I mean, the, the, the new goal here is basically, you know, to save the forest, to save your business, to save something else. No, you and I are both, both uh, mountain gonna... men and we love camping, so it's not like you and I are anything against saving the forest. I, I mean, I'm, I'm all, I'd, I'd stand in front of, front of, front of uh, loggers who are just destroying an entire forest, but if you're doing selective logging, which has been proven to be selective good for the forest logging. and right. benefit the economy, I mean, why why don't we go after selective logging and kind of reinforcing that more instead of because because that that doesn't help my bleeding heart. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry. Doesn't fit your sir. radical agenda. Yeah. There, no. uh, your your bleeding heart's gonna have to like no. hold on for a moment because no. if it wouldn't my have bleeding been bleeding, heart is more important than logic. It. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I well. apologize. Okay, I, no. I, I I'm gonna go with that. I don't too. I don't care. My, listen, my my. Oh, so heart I'm agreeing pet, with no, you, and you don't care that I'm project. agreeing with no, you. No, now now I'm now I'm for logging. Actually. Now, I'm for, now you're yeah. for That's how it works. No, oh, okay. no, oh, now you're yeah, no, yeah. now oh, I'm for logging. Oh, it's going. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, well, enough for, enough for the logging. Yeah, uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, watching the Libertarian Counterpoint here. Um, well, well, we will see you, uh, I believe, next Thursday. See you. Thanks. Mm-hmm.